I want to praise Yahweh, Baha Shem, Yahweh Shai, double honors to the elders of Great Millstone that's holding it down on the highways and the byways, teaching and preaching on Daily Motion on YouTube. Today we're getting on the uh, Magra, you know, digital currency, the wallet, buy and sell. We'll be in grocery stores. In different places uh, on planet Earth, they're gonna be buying and selling. You know, they have magra, they cut it in the flesh. You have videos uh, and Bible precepts on it. This is Isaiah 36 and 6. Although thou trustest in this staff of this broken reed on Egypt, thereon if a man lead it will go into his hand. You know, that magra. And pierced it so as Pharaoh, king of Egypt, to all that trust in him. You know, Isaiah 36 and 6. And Shalom, Israel, Shalom, and your help with your will. Yaparaka, Yahweh Mahar, Gabar Yahar. Shalom, Israel, Shalom. Fulfilling Revelation 14. And 10 okay so that fire for the most part is gonna come from the nuclear missiles as well as the visitation of Yahweh Shai and the holy angels and what people out there call UFOs because out of the UFOs you're gonna have laser beams you know which is concentrated fire touching the earth okay melting people to death in that day hence Malachi 4 verse 1, Job 20 verse 23, Isaiah 66 and verse 15, and a host of other scriptures. But this is the warning, okay? This is the warning pursuant to Ezekiel 3 and verse 17. You know, pretty much us here at Great Millstone, starting with the apostles on down, you know, we're like your spiritual forecasters, okay? As it pertains to Bible prophecy, hence um, Matthew 16, verse 3, um, Isaiah 42, and verse 9, the Lord said, um, Former things have passed, roughly paraphrasing, and new things do I declare. So, right now, Yahweh Bashma was shy, who the world in their ignorance referred to as God and Jesus Christ, is declaring the next major prophecy that's going to take place on the earth via his men the men of great millstone okay and what we're warning you about is the fulfillment of revelation 13 and 16 the mark of the beast and the judgment thereof revelation 14 verses 9 to 10 and they're going to use individuals like this okay these various different journalists and newscasters you know, they're going to use these people to push their agenda, to deceive the masses of people. Okay? Anyway, without further ado, let me play this video. A cover story now, finding safer ways to pay this holiday shopping season. Tap to pay transactions are estimated to grow by more than 150% over the next few years. As this method becomes more popular, Becky Worley joins us to break down how safe they are to use. Good morning to you, Becky. Good morning, Robin. Yeah, if you've ever seen people use their phone or their watch to pay for a purchase and wondered, how do they do that? And is it safe? Well, we're going to answer those questions, but spoiler alert, once you set this up, it's easier, it's faster, and it may even be safer than using plastic. So as you can see, they're pushing the digital wallet on the smartphone as being safer and more convenient, all right? And that's how they're going to deceive the masses of people. They're doing it in the name of convenience. So again, do not be deceived by how they're marketing Esau's agenda. This wicked agenda of theirs. This digital wallet. Tap to pay. First, the tech. Two devices, your phone and the payment reader, communicate wirelessly. That transmission is encrypted, meaning it can't be intercepted by a hacker. It's a really great tech. And guess what? When they come with this microchip implant, that too is going to be encrypted. 
encrypted in the sense that these hackers are not going to be able to um, hack your microchip implant device. That's how they're going to push it. And um, I could be wrong, but I believe you've got companies like Kapersky for that. Norton. Um, I have to do more research on that, but I believe a few years ago, um, the computer company, the antivirus company, um, Kapersky, they came out with their own um, microchip implant that was encrypted, that couldn't get hacked. But that was a few years ago. I'm not sure where they're at with it now. But um, to my recollection, you know, they had a particular chip that couldn't be encrypted. So again, you know, we're not ignorant as to what, you know, they're pushing here in this agenda. These are probably easier to track. It's your decision when you wear it. Mm -hmm. Your implant, you have 24-7. But I don't want to be scared about someone tracking me and knowing exactly where I am. Anything that's connected to the internet is of interest to us. Um, chip implants is interesting for a few reasons. Um, you can store data on them and you can use them to identify yourself. That also means that that data might be vulnerable. Most people think that Kaspersky is an antivirus company and we are that, but we're a, a global security company doing all kinds of security research and we want to be on top of all new trends that we see. The people who get implants are people of all different ages and backgrounds, but what they have in common is that they are not afraid of technology. It is people who are curious about technology and are interested in learning how it can be used. It's practical reasons, because I'm clumsy and I forget my keys and my cards and I travel a lot. I can never lose my keys, I can never use, lose my card. I have connected my RFID chip to the gym. But anyway, let's, let's continue on. Technology that helps reduce a lot of the friction of purchasing. Android, Apple and Samsung phones all have digital wallets built in. You set them up by adding a credit card or a debit card. You can even use a prepaid card. I have an iPhone, so I just double click on the side and up pops my wallet app. I select the credit card I want to use. I just tap and the purchase is charged just like I used a regular credit card except it's faster and easier than using plastic. But for You see, it's faster and it's easier than using plastic, as in your credit card or your bank card. The next thing is gonna be, you know, implanting or having a microchip in your hand, all right? That's gonna be the next, the next thing that they're gonna push. Like let's say you, you lose your phone now, or well, if you have it in your hand, <laughs> it's always going to be on you. You know, your data, your information is always going to be on you. And that's how, that's how they're going to market the, you know, the chip. And let's not forget, you already have companies out there like um, Walletmore that does everything that this woman's speaking about in this video, you know, concerning the digital wallet storing your information on the microchip implant you know your identification your medical records your cash money which is going to be your digital money because they're going to do away with your your paper money you know whether it be um the pound sterling the us dollar the russian ruble that's all going to be done away with man anyway a lot of people, the reason they aren't doing this is they worry about safety. Some people are still hesitant on using digital wallets because it's weird to not have that card information directly in front of you. Your plastic credit card, though, has a vulnerability. If someone gets the number and the date and code on the back, they can make charges. 
But when your phone communicates with an e-reader, it doesn't share that credit card number. It creates a one-time use number that is useless to a thief. It's called tokenization. Well, the reason tokenization is really helpful is that it creates a level of encryption that we just can't get with physical cards. Google says digital wallets provide added security, and Apple adds it's safer than using a physical credit, debit, or prepaid card. Okay, but what if your phone gets stolen? In order to use the digital wallets on watches or phones, your device must have a password. Now, Apple tells us that Apple Pay is available in more than 85% of retailers, but one downside is that that other 15% means you still have to carry a plastic credit card. And we should mention that it's not just the big three that we mentioned, Samsung, Google, and Apple. There are also new services like Zelle and PayPal and Venmo that you can use in some stores. It's a whole new world out there for paying for your purchases, Michael. Yes, it is, Becky. When I tell my kids I give them cash, they look like, what is this? Put it on a card. <laughs> yeah, cash is, you know, <laughs> they really do. But thank you so much for that, Becky. As always, we appreciate you. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Rob.